Hi guys, I hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today for another video. You may notice I'm in a different shack today. I'm in James's indoor house shack slash study slash office. Yeah. Um, so this is where James, um, when it's too cold to go in the shed, this is where James um, does his, his indoor radio work. You can see a really nice display of phones and um, radios on the shelf. Uh, behind me there and I just wanted to just do a little bit of a follow up video on the Retivis Arnie RT98 um, so I thought I would do that today from James's shack so we've met up today done a little bit of um, radio work mm -hmm. tested a couple of radios and antenna stuff on Canuck uh, Chase yes. which is down in Staffordshire um, for those who don't live in the in the UK so uh, Staffordshire just north of the West Midlands would that be accurate? That's about right yeah. yeah so Canuck Chase port of Staffordshire with Castle Ring Canuck Wood it's all part of the same area yeah so it's Predominantly flat ground, but with like a ridge um, that sort of sort of divides Manchester from Birmingham, doesn't it? Really, if that's what it's, it's hard to explain, but it's it's quite a good area to test radios. Anyway, we've been using the uh, well, we've been having a look at the RT ninety eight. Uh, the heavens broke before and it started to rain, so we haven't actually had a chance to do anything with this today. But basically, I wanted to show you. Um, in the last video I did on this, I discussed mounting this in a car. I wanted to show you what I use for portable use with this radio. So. If you haven't seen the video, the link is in the description. This is a 5, 10 and 15 watt UHF radio from Retivis. It's completely self-contained, so the microphone's fixed. Um, it's got a, a power lead there, which I've just put a cigarette um, plug on. So really handy for in the car. But if you're out camping or you're away from your car, um, what I like to use is this. So for those of you who watch this channel closely, um, you may have seen something like, well, you may have seen something identical to this before. Um, you may have seen this when we did the test of the Retivis portable repeater. Again, there'll be a link in the description for that. And this is a portable um, ammo box, which is a self-contained power supply. Now, James brought one of these on our last outing onto Canet Chase, and it was really, really handy. And a lot of viewers on the channel asked about this, asked if they could see it in a little bit more detail. And um, yeah, just I thought I'd discuss it with you today. So James is very kindly um, made me one of these, so I was I was impressed with the one that I saw last time, and he has uh, really kindly made me one of these ammo ammo box power supply units, and it's got a a charge controller in it. It gives USB power, it gives 12 volt power, um, it gives cigarette plugs. It's got power poles. Now James is quite um, quite technical when it comes to electronics, so I'm not going to try and explain this in detail, but this is a really good handy. Uh, quite cost-effective solution for, for portable power, so yeah. uh, James very kindly uh, made me one. We got the parts together and he's uh, put this together, so I thought I would let James discuss with you sort of just the basic construction of this uh, this device. Okay. It's, it's a very simple basic device, trying to keep things as simple as possible. It's using lead acid batteries, which are the easiest to kind of work with um, at the moment, with the least amount of circuitry and components necessary. So it's an ammo case, an ammo box, I think it costs about £15. From, um, from Amazon UK, um, which has got the two lead acid batteries inside, powered together, uh, wired in parallel to give you uh, about 18 amp hours uh, in, in power. Um, just made a false top using an old plastic, uh, like a bread, breadboard, cut down to size. Uh, and sorry, and the thing with them is that they're made of like a ni they're made of nylon. It's like a nylon so plastic. It's just yeah. so hard, well, it's in chopping balls, so they're yeah, really yeah. hard wearing. Very easy to cut, just using an ordinary wood saw, just to cut it to size, and then I just mounted it with a few brackets. I wasn't too concerned about the integrity uh, of the case with, with being regards to sort of ruining the waterproofness of it all. Um, these bolts uh, hold everything nicely anyway. Um, so the outputs, you've got uh, an inverter built inside underneath, which is powered by this switch here. I'll turn the inverter on and off to give you 240 volts. Um, you've got a 12 volt output and you've got the USB, two USB outputs there. Um, all controlled by the power button on here. So once you turn the, the unit on, the solar charger, which is what I use to charge the batteries with, powers up, gives you the voltage, the readout, and if you want any of these to work for output power, press that and that will provide power. The advantage being, if you're going to be running lights or anything off the batteries, by the time you get to the critical low power of the battery, this will just switch off and it'll protect your batteries from being discharged too much. Plus the thing is, as well, what, what we said in this is you could use you could use alternative batteries like LiPo batteries um, or lithium ion batteries, but 
one that's not as cost effective because mm. these sealed lead acid batteries you can get really cheap um, plus the radio we're actually using with this is a really cheap quite a budget radio anyway so I didn't really want to spend the money on using like lipos plus mm. um, it can be quite volatile should they be like pierced or damaged so I think sealed lead acid yeah. although there is a bit of a, a bit more weight mm. for me that yeah was, that was, it's not like yeah. you fasten this to your backpack and walk miles so you know that's not really going to be a problem so the extra weight isn't an issue but the thing i like about lead acid is that you can they're a lot more forgiving so i'm using this solar charger here so i can plug in a solar panel into here that will recharge the batteries i can plug that straight into my car to power it up from the car to recharge from the car and also i've got two more outputs there that go straight to the battery for you know more outputs um, and it just seemed to make sense just to stick with lead acid for this particular battery. If I was doing a lot of backpacking, I like if you were, you'd want something lighter. So therefore you would consider sort of lipo batteries. Yeah. But for this application, um, it, it, it doesn't get carried away far. It stays in the boot. Uh, this, is, this is just the cheapest, best way, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm really <clears> happy <throat> with it. Like I said, I've used this a couple of times now. Um, on the local hill. For those who watch the channel regularly, you know I go up to Wernerthlow and it's not always ideal to have the car switched on. Plus, if I want to go true portable, um, that doesn't involve me being sat in the car, so it's just nice to have this. Um, so yeah, I, I, obviously James, I appreciate you taking the time to put this together for me. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would I would cover this because it's it's a, another way of powering the little Retivis radio out in the field and it's just a really nice self-contained um, portable power pack, uh, really cost effective and yeah, it just just does the job for me um, for me perfectly. So yeah, uh, I hope that answers the, the guys that wanted to see this in more detail. Um, you have got a build video on the original of these, haven't you? Yeah, the, I've done a few control. videos on this over the last sort of 12 months yeah. to get whereabouts, but we'll put the links into them and uh, yeah. you'll have a, a closer look at uh, the build. Um, but yeah, really, uh, really good, happy with it James, so uh, thank you. Um, thanks for watching guys, it was just a short one there, uh, like I say, a few people wanted to see this. Uh, a couple of people wanted to see how I powered this if I wasn't using it in the car. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll quickly, I, I didn't, um, may as well power the radio, yeah, yeah. Right, haven't we? Uh, I've not got an antenna in here, so uh, we're not going to be doing any transmitting, but it's as simple as just opening the top cover, if I just give you that, James. Um, we flick on the power there, turn on the solar charge controller, and then we plug in the 12, uh, 12 volt cigarette plug there. That's out, outputting 12 volts now, and then it's as simple as just switching the radio on like that. And as you can see, the radio comes to life. So yeah, really, really nice. In fact, it's small enough, James. I could actually store the radio in there. <laughs> yeah, in there yeah, yeah, I didn't even notice that. So yeah, that's uh, that's really self-contained. Uh, so yeah, thank you, James. Link to James' videos and channels will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Any questions, um, drop them in the box below. I'm sure James will be happy to answer anything on this that I can't. Um, yeah, and all I have to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching. Plenty more coming soon, so stay tuned. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm struggling with you a little bit, so I will say 7-3, but yeah, you're the third contact on 70 today. Uh, actually, uh, had one on 2 metres and three on 70, so uh, that's not bad going. I'm just testing out a radio with a friend of mine, uh, James 20 KBA. So cheers for coming back to the call there. I'll say 7-3 from M3HHY. Yep, yeah, no worries. I'm just running 10 watts here on a, a miniature Retivis RT98. It's a really tiny mobile radio. I'm just testing with a friend of mine, James, 20 KBA. Um, so we're just uh, just in his shack at the moment. Home QTH for me is Greater Manchester and the, uh, the call sign, if you didn't quite catch it, is Mike 3 Hotel Hotel Yankee. The name's Lewis.